Time to compare the Pocket Cinema Counter 4K with the Panasonic GH5. Let's get started. Don't have enough money to buy a lens and you want to try out the Micro Four Thirds? Borrow Lenses is a great place to borrow it, rent it, test it out, and see what you think about it. They'll ship lenses wherever you're at, wherever you're at in the world. Cameras, lenses, equipments, gimbals, the things that you need to be able to make your production happen. And they'll ship it to where you're at and where you're going. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And I'm Kenneth Merrill. Today, I wait a minute, you're not Kenneth Merrill. I'm Lars Lindstrom. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> this is Andy Cow. Andy has been working with the Slide Lens for several years now. And today he's joined me because Kenneth is off on a feature and Andy is an expert on the GH5. Because you own one, right? Yes, this is my camera, my GH5. There you go. Andy's had version three, four, and five of the GH uh, series. And you like the camera? I love it. It's been my workhorse, and I love to see what it does up to the, uh, the Black Magic. The Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera has a lot of great features, so let's compare these two cameras and just see how they look together. We're going to look at dynamic range. We want to look at uh, dynamic range. We want to look at stabilization. We want to look at color science. And also we want to look at ergonomics and ease of use. Coming from a still background, I understand that raw footage workflow because every still image I do, I shoot in raw. It gives me complete control when I go into the edit. I can do whatever I want to. I can change my color balance. I can change the shadow. I can do everything with it. It gives you so much control. This camera has the ability to do that. And we want to look at that and just see how powerful that really is. So should we get started? Let's go. All right, Rachel, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. We're going to take a quick look at skin tones here between these two different cameras. Blackmagic's known for their color science and their skin tones. So let's just take a look at how these two compare with one another. It's a really soft kind of situation right now. We have just a little bit of glow coming from the sun that's kind of gone behind the clouds. We've got some blue sky behind her. Just see how those colors look and how her skin tone looks against that blue and the white. I think it'll be very interesting. So we're going to take a look at the GH5 skin tones versus the, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Got to get that whole name in there. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The BMP BIMPS. BIMPS 4K. BIMPKA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Now you have graded this, right? Uh, I did each clip by looking at the scopes and making sure that it's within the range of each scope. The vector scope, the RGB parade, the histogram, the waveform. And this is the closest I got between the two cameras. Okay, so here's the GH5 skin tone. It is a little muddy. It could have a little more contrast. It's just, I mean, it's not terrible. We don't see a... Well, compared to the Black Magic, the Black Magic has a lot more vibrancy in the colors. The color is much more vibrant. It's a lot more natural. Uh -huh. uh, it doesn't seem like it's struggling anywhere in the shadows and the highlights. The colors are very vibrant. The skin tone, she has a very nice fair skin. She does. But you can also see the, the roll off between the, the densities of her skin. Yeah, you can. And it's, I mean, the Black Magic has, there's a very nice roll off. Look at her chin, chin bone line there as it mm -hmm. goes from that highlight on her face into that shadow under her chin. Mm -hmm. and just a really pretty roll off and it's very soft. And side by side comparison, you can see the major difference between it. I mean, both of them still look like a good usable Im image. In some ways, I like the openness of the GH5 mm -hmm. more than it's the, more airy. Yeah, more than the, the heaviness of the of the Black Magic. So we're going to do a slow motion test now with both these cameras. I always like to look at slow motion, just how they compare with one another. If there's any artifacting, just see how they break down. First off, we'll do it in 4K, 60 frames a second with the Black Magic, and then and then we're going to do well. We're also going to do in 4K at 60 frames a second. They're both going to be on the same lens, same focal length. Uh, same aperture, same ISO, around the same uh, shutter, speed. shutter speed. Yeah. Then we'll go to 120. 120. We both have to drop down from 4K to down to 1080p. So we'll take a look at those and see how they compare. Any artifacting in the blacks and her hair? Not that I could see. It looks all pretty clean. Now with the Black Magic, of course, the color looks much better. The it, colors is It's beautiful. much more vibrant and cinematic. Yeah. And the slow motion looks wonderful. Slow motion looks you pretty good. You don't see artifacting in the blacks. You're not seeing things break up. No, you don't see any kind of like Let's pixel Let's go to 120 stamps. frames a second. I'm really curious with that because both these cameras now have to go to 1080p. Yes. You know, there's, you can't render that in 4K on, for either of them. The color, I think, on the GH5, it 
shifted more towards the magenta. It did. She shifted way towards the magenta compared to the last one. So now, but then we go to the Black Magic, and our color didn't really shift. I mean, this oh. color is very beautiful. It's just it beautiful helped. greens and the blues and. Uh, yes, it's very vibrant. It's vibrant, but it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't scream out at you. I mean, yeah, in the uh, 120 on the GH5, you could see a little pixelation happening in her hair, mm -hmm. in, in her head. Uh, it gets a little degraded, the image, but you're at 1080p. You're at 1080p, you know, it's a, but they both look fabulous. Um, you can make an argument for the color for both of these. Some people are going to say, I love the way the GH5 looks, you know, but I think the... Uh, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera has just a—it's just a little more rich color. Yes, you yes. Know? The roll off—I think that's what uh, what we see the difference on. So we're going to do just a little walking shot with each of these cameras. This is really unfair to the Pocket Cinema Camera because it doesn't have any internal stabilization, whereas the GH5 does. But we'll just mm -hmm. compare those two. Is it a fair test, Andy? It's not a fair test, but it's to see—it's to help you decide which camera to get. There you go. So let's shoot a couple shots here and just see how they look. One key feature that I really love about the GH5 is that it has internal body stabilization. Which is really nice. It's a very smooth look. It's perfect for running gunning. It's perfect for if you're a one-man band and you really want to follow someone or you want to have that handheld effect and you don't want to see the jitterness and make other pe people feel sick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the GH5, so hand holding the GH5 is just... There's a little bit of jitter, but it's not distracting to me. Especially walking from side to side. Yep, got a little sun on her face there. That looks nice. Now let's if, look at the Black Magic. Oh, you have something else on it? If you do practice this, you could get it much smoother than I can. Uh, we were walking through the tall grass. And I, uh, this ground was uneven. But you could also go slower to get much more smoother. Now, now the Black Magic has no internal stabilization, so you're just working with the camera handheld. That's a disadvantage for the Black Magic. Magic. It really is because look, this is very jittery. This is mm. hard to look at. It's kind of like an action film. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a girl just got it's, <laughs> it's born identity. Born. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the woods. Here we go. So you really are going to have to, and we did, we threw the uh, Blackmagic Cinema Camera onto a gimbal, and it's the Tilt to Gravity uh, G2, and it's beautiful. That's it's the gimbal is doing its butter. job. Yeah, it's just it's very pretty. If you look at the footage between the GH5 and the Blackmagic with the gimbal, the gimbal is, is smoother by like 20-30%. It doesn't have the side jitter. If you look at the footage on the GH5, there's still a little bit of jitter going the uh, the rotation. Now with the gimbal on the Black Magic, there is none of that Y axis roll. And that's an unfair comparison. We know it is. I mean, you can't compare a gimbal to uh, internal stabilization. The fact that the G5 holds up and competes at all is pretty impressive. But if you're going to use the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera and to handhold and to just kind of motion stuff, you've got to get on a gimbal. And it's a great camera for that because it's lightweight and mm -hmm. you can throw it on a gimbal and you're going to have plenty of focus because it's a micro four thirds. I mean, it's just, it's a pretty good camera for that application. However, there is, that's another equipment that you're going to have to carry around that's extra weight, that's extra batteries that you have to, uh, that you have to keep track of. Yep. It's, it introduces another monster. It does. Camera's rolling, I'm gonna put it in my SKB case. This case might just fall out the back of our van. Sometimes that's been known to happen. <laughs> so my SKB case went flying out of the back of the truck. I don't know what happened. Is it still working? Is my camera still working? Yes it is, still recording. There we go. I'm not sure what number of drop this is, but it keeps getting kicked out, dropped, and crashed, and ran over. Still keeps on working, so keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. So we're doing a, an over-under test here. We got a pretty bright light coming from outside. She's got on a red top inside, which falls mostly into shadow. So we're going to see how we can recover this and just what the dynamic range is as we compare these two cameras to each other. So here's the GH5 uh, with the, that light coming through the window. What do we got? She's lit just by ambient light. We didn't put any light There's on no her. There's no fill on the camera side here There's at all. no fill. Uh, ideally, you would light her. Yeah. But we like to see the most harshest conditions. If you didn't have light and you needed to do an interview, this is what you get out of the GH5 and the Blackmagic. If we go negative one stop, 
but we're already starting to really become very pasty in the so you couldn't recover that the whites you couldn't keep the shadows and recover the whites there already starting to see a lot of artifacting in the in the darks it just gets worse and worse it's, yeah it's, uh, at this point, <laughs> this point uh, now the shadows are still struggling they're starting to block up we're starting to see artifacting and the highlights are blowing out now three stops it's just it becomes kind of like a video recorder played back on a 480p kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. TV. <laughs> okay, so the black magic here, that's our neutral on black magic. The colors look amazing. It's We're holding more whites here. We are. And uh, the shadow detail here in this image, quite a bit more than the GH5. Now uh, it gets a little bit more contrasty here. The shadows, you, you see more pixelation, but it's hold, still holding the color pretty well. Let's go to minus two. Now even in minus two stops, the black magic still looks pretty good. It's still holding pretty well. I mean, the, we're not blowing out outside. The windows are not blowing out. The blacks aren't, I mean, the blacks are starting to, to lose detail, obviously, but the GH5 yes. is starting to really fall apart at this point. It's very, the only thing that's, that looks good on the GH5 is just that white Yeah, the, the, <laughs> beam. White, the white beam, <laughs> the, the, the brace on the window frame, yeah. Yes, so this, there's n almost no color saturation in the blacks. Yeah, we're it's losing color. It's just barely holding on, kind of like the cat that's like on the wire. It's <laughs> yeah. like, hang in there. <laughs> barely <That's> hanging <laughs> in. <laughs> Let's go to minus three. Now, the cat has fallen off of the wire. <laughs> for the GH5, <laughs> for the GH5. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely fallen off. There's all kinds of grain, there's all kinds of color shift and weird noise. But it was a different time of day? Be no, these were shot at the exact at, same exact time. Same time I, with the exact same lenses on the same focal length. Uh, yeah. With the same settings. So but it's just amazing to me how much we see this. It's like a white bloom outside with the GH5, whereas with the Black Magic, we're seeing all kinds of detail outside. Uh, there's no detail on her. This is where no. you would love to uh, add a light. And this, this is a usable image if you lit her. So up to minus three. So let's look at plus one if we go the other direction. Do you know what my first thought is? I see this. This feels like a better exposure all the way around for the Black Magic on her. I think this is where the dual ISO of the Black Magic kind of kicks in. Because we are looking at ISO here, right? Because we the others we did, the minus we did with the aperture, but the pluses we did by pushing the ISO. So this is 800 ISO. Yes, this is 800. Uh, on the, our base with the neutral, uh, we are at 2.8 at 400. And this, to get one stop, we had to up the ISOs on the cameras. So this is at ISO 800. So let's go to 1600, or two stops, plus two stops. Plus two stops, GH5 uh, falls apart. I yeah, mean, the it's... highlights are just blown. The, the white uh, column right behind her, it's clipped. It's clipped, yeah, definitely. It's definitely that clipped. white column behind her. So if we go to plus three, this is going to just be pretty much falling apart. And the color on the GH5, it's muted. It's very desaturated. Yep. So the GH5 is like on a white background now. Yeah. <laughs> She's on a psych. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's her in a flower <laughs> on a psych. Now here's our ISO test. And between the two at 400, there's actually with the GH5, what I've been seeing throughout all of our tests is the GH5 renders skin tone muted compared to the G uh, to the Black Magic. Uh, the between ISO 400 and 800, there's not much of a difference. Not much of a difference. It looks like the blacks are opening up a little bit on the right camera right side on the Black Magic. Uh, they're still nice and rich with the GH5. But let's go to the 1600. Okay. Between 1600 and uh, 800, there's also that not that much of a difference. And this is also what I'm used to seeing. I'm comfortable with shooting at 1600 in real, real world conditions and not worry about the blacks. And we seem to have very clean blacks there, both of them, GH5 and the, and the Black Magic. So what happens when we go to 3200? Now this should be where our native ISO takes, kicks in. Well, it actually was kicking in back at 1600 because it, you're extrapolating you, from the 30, uh, 3200 at 1600, not from the uh, 400. Which is interesting because Blackmagic states that the uh, native ISO is at 3200, but in this test, it seems that 1600 is cleaner than 3200. If you look at the blacks, it becomes more noisy. You're right. In the right. 3200. The native is doing its job. It's helping the 1600, I believe. Uh, and it's the 3200 looks better than the uh, GH5, obviously. I mean, it's very nice. Let's look at 6400. Now the black magic is struggling a little bit. Just a little bit. This is where you would see kind of like if the GH5 was at 1600, 
Yeah. I mean, this is two extra stops that you're getting on the Yeah, on it the is Black two Mac. extra stops. And the GH5 is definitely struggling. It's got a lot of artifacting. And yeah, the black curtain just came. It's, it's just gone. It's just one piece of black now. Yeah, it's now a black bar. <laughs> it's, There's it's no more black detail. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the uh, 12,800. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> Who would ever use 12,800? <laughs> the Black Magic still looks like you could pass it off. I uh, yeah yeah you could. I if mean, you just flash it really quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing you said the other day? Oh, it's nice from afar, but far from nice. Yes, nice from afar, but far from nice. <laughs> uh, if you like look at saying. the Black Magic at thirty-two, no, sixty-four hundred. Yeah. From far away and kind of like squint your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, it's a usable footage. <laughs> nice from far, but far from nice. <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's crazy. We can go up from here to on the Black Magic to. Uh, but why would you? Unless it's like a effect that you want to do. Now for my favorite test, <laughs> the JP test. What should we call this? The lan girl with the lantern. <laughs> the girl with the lantern <laughs> test. <laughs> Now this is something that I've seen you do over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, a person holding a lantern in a very foggy condition, late at night, and it's very fantasy-like. We only had two lights. One that's inside her lantern, diffused with maybe like double diffusion, yep. full diffusion. And but then it's open on the side so that light has a single diffusion, kind of hits her face, so that the light's not too bright and it hits her face coming out of the back of the lantern. And we have a Aperture 120D with a full CTB attach it right behind her right side, rimming her. So they look pretty similar between the two. Although I feel like that we have a little, and it's hard with smoke because smoke changes everything. If she's enveloped in a little more smoke in one than the other, it's gonna change the, the shadows a lot. I mean, that smoke opens up the shadows. But it feels to me like the GH5 is a little more dense in the shadows. We okay. see a little more detail into the shadows with the Black Magic. Um, yeah, it just it feels a little more open, and the skin tone is a little reddish, but this is very subjective. Yes, like you said, it's subjective, and it depends on, I mean, they both are beautiful images. They are. They both are very usable Im images, and it's just a matter on your preference. Okay, so let's wrap this up. I'm going to start rolling through some of my thoughts, and you just knock me over every time you want to jump okay. in. Here. <laughs> okay, okay so what's the, what's the biggest disadvantage that you found with the Blackmagic Cinema Pocket Camera? Battery life. Battery life was awful. But it is that Canon battery, which is not hard to get a bunch of and to be able to have those on, on camera. At least it's, yeah, well, anyway, battery life. I the, think we went through about like six batteries within eight hours. We did. When you buy the Blackmagic, it does not come with a charger. It does not come with a battery charger. Does it come with a battery? It comes with a battery, but the only way to charge it is through the camera. Oh, so back, so it to, has, back to that world where you have to plug your camera in to charge the battery. <laughs> that's, an, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. When you buy the camera, it does not come with a battery charger and does not come with the mini XLR adapter to adapt into XLR. So, so that's something to keep down. about. Yeah. Yes. Blackmagic uh, boasts about the two internal mics that they have on the camera, but my opinion about that is it's still an onboard mic. Yeah. It's yeah. for reference. It, it is. It's nothing that that you could use for for production quality or for deliverables. It captures the sound. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have that uh, XLR Mini to XLR to be able to test it because we really wanted to see how it compared to the C200, see how it compared to the uh, uh, GH5 has With a the sound module. Uh, module you can put on top of it that runs through the hot shoe. The Black Magic does not have continuous autofocus. No. It only has uh, push to focus. Yeah. So for me, the, the one thing that I found a little frustrating is I want an EVF. I, I just struggle not being able to look, especially when we're outside. I'm looking. That screen is big and beautiful on the Black Magic, but it's just I, with the GH5, I can look in, I can see through this, the camera, I can really get an idea of what I'm getting in that bright light situation. Now the viewing angle on the Black Magic, it it's actually pretty impressive because if you look at it extremely, it doesn't have a color shift. Yeah, if you're on extreme angles, you're still seeing it. It's still you're still seeing it, and you could judge by it. Mm -hmm. However, I'm used to holding the camera, I'm 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, on a good day. <laughs> and I'm used to holding it above, just slightly above people's eye line. So it's a little bit more So you're, you're using the camera up here a lot. And I use the tilt screen on the GH5 constantly. Which has so many different, you can flip it out to the side, you can flip it, I mean, there's so many different options with I that tilt screen. Uh, I can't say how many times I've been crammed in the corner 
or I could only see the camera from off to the side. And it's, it's just so versatile and easy to work with. Yeah. So those are the major drawbacks we felt with the, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. The advantages that I felt with it is one, dynamic range. I felt like it had a much superior dynamic range to the GH5. I mean, really starting to become a cinema camera. It really has that kind of capability. It I, has about like a stop or two difference than the, than the GH5. At least that. Color-wise, what do you think of the color? It blows the GH5 out of the water. The color on it is just... It's mind-boggling that how you could get something so beautiful with the price point that it's at also. That's the thing. You're talking about $1,300. What's the GH5 now? Uh, the GH5 is 2000 So you had a much cheaper price point, and there's some things there. You are giving up the EVF, the you know articulated screen, uh, some of those kinds of things, but you are gaining in cost you know you have a much cheaper price point you can almost get two of them you know for not much more than one of the gh5 one thing you do i uh, have to note out is that both of these cameras are micro four thirds sensors a lot of people don't have micro four thirds systems they would have to invest in a micro four thirds native lens or good thing about micro four thirds is like you could adapt it to almost any lens a canon lens full frame even those old eng b4 mounts so Blackmagic does make an adapter that will adapt it to your Canon lenses so you can use all your Canon glass on it. However, it does crop in on the image. So if you're used to a 50 millimeter uh, lens, then it'll probably crop in maybe to 100 or APS-C, which is a third of that, to like an 80. So there's a, there's a major comparison there. It's going to be a crop factor when you start using your Canon glass. We, we put this camera to the highest quality that the camera can produce. That's the downside because if you want the highest quality the camera can produce, you also need a computer that could handle all of this footage. Yes. I have an older 2011 iMac and when I try to open up DaVinci, my computer goes, come, pew, ting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. The workflow for shooting in RAW is, although if you're using DaVinci, it's much easier. You don't have to shoot everything RAW. You could use an Apple ProRes. It has an Apple ProRes uh, HQ, which is a great Kodak. It's going to work seamlessly into your workflow and not, not create as many issues with computing power. I did find the controls on the Blackmagic extremely easy. Like ISO is just a slider bar, you know, 400, 600, 800. I mean, it's just very easy to use. I thought that was very easy to use. Have a wheel in the front for the aperture, which I thought was very nice. I don't know, I thought the controls on the Blackmagic were extremely easy to, to, to navigate. The exhaust vent of the Blackmagic is right underneath. It's right, so it's right under where you set your hand? Right where you set your hand. It's not a aluminum chassis body. And also the vents for the audio ports are kind of pointing straight up on both sides. So it's not really weather sealed. The ergonomics of the Blackmagic, it, it's bigger. It can't fit in your pocket. I don't know why no, they call I it a pocket. Really <laughs> pocket. I'm not sure what that's about. Unless you have like overalls or baggy <laughs> jeans in like the 90s and you can stuff like six, seven of them in there. <laughs> but the ergonomics of it is pretty good. The buttons are right where your thumb rests. It's kind of confusing to me. You are hitting the button occasionally when you grab it, right? Right where your button, your thumb is rest is two buttons. One for auto exposure and the other one I think is to punch in. That's right. So it kept going to auto exposure. It would reset the exposure on. And there's no way to to control Z on that. Yeah, no, you got to go back and reset your exposure wheel and yeah. So for me, if in a real world condition and you're rushing and you accidentally press that, it throws your concentration off and yeah. throws it throws you off. That's true. So there you have it. Look at the GH5 compared to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Also known as a BM BMK. 4K. Pimka 4K. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. If you've had a desire to get started shooting video but haven't known what to do, we've got a great video basics download for you that'll help get you started on that road and help you make money in video. Video is more popular and more important than ever and everywhere you turn, someone needs a video made and they don't know who to ask. We teach you everything from what kind of equipment to buy, to how to set up your camera and get the best image you can, how to collect clean sound, directing people on camera, and what kind of shots you need to be getting to make your story look cinematic. This becomes a great course that's going to teach you the things you need to know to be able to get started. We just want you to be able to make a living in video. So get over to theslimelens.com, check out our download, buy it today so it'll help you to be ready. Absolutely, the Blackmagic will be a great comparison here because the Blackmagic Cinema Camera really 
the black okay the, the black magic pocket cinema camera how many times are we going to say that <laughs> okay 